Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, the video today is a little bit late for this morning's episode of Bullet Points because I'll be honest, the allergies are kicking me right in the face. So I apologize for the tardy appearance of this video, but it's not going to disappoint because when all is lost and gun control just can't be seen to be found, send in none other than the David Hogg. The youth extraordinaire just turned 21, and ABC is here to prop him up in a perfect puff piece, including asking him if he's going to run for office. This is going to be great. It's linked in the description box below if you guys want to have some fun. Let's dive in. I cannot wait to share this with you. All right. Parkland shooting survivors. Activists call on lawmakers to pass gun reform as midterms approach. Body bags representing those killed by guns were placed on the National Mall. Now, this is part one of part two, because I have to spend some time on the interview, and then tonight's episode, I'm going to actually address the lies that they're doing in the uh, article itself, but this one's going to be tasty and delicious. So, here's a little snippet to set this up of what happened. On the fourth anniversary of March for Our Lives rally, more than 1,100 body bags, each one representing 150 people, were placed on the National Mall Thursday to mark the more than 170,000 people who have died from gun violence in the U.S. since 2018 shooting at Situation in Florida. Okay, I got, I got two things here. First of all, two-thirds of those were suicides. To conflate them as gun violence is extremely manipulative. manipulative. That's one thing. Anyway, this is the second thing. Who honors the respect? And who respects and honors all the victims of those fallen? You're putting body bags on a national mall? These aren't just body bags, by the way. They're arranged in a format of that says thoughts and prayers. Who's disrespectful? Just saying. All right, so now, check this out. First of all, we're going to look at this setup piece from the news anchor from ABC. Listen to how she sets up David Hogg here and listen to what he says because there's three clips I'm going to show you here which are comical, but there's a lot of gaslighting going on. Check this out. Explanation or excuse, rationale, whatever word you want to use, because a lot of times before when Republicans were in control, people wanted to blame Republicans. Well, well, now you have Democrats who are in control. So have you, has anybody told you why this is not happening? Yes, and it's uh, one word, filibuster. It's the filibuster that is preventing this from happening. Uh, it's this, you know, mundane rule that was set up. It's not even in our Constitution that uh, prevents us from being able to use the fact that we have a majority in Congress that the American people have voted in that unfortunately is stopping us from passing a bill that 90 percent of Americans support. 90 percent of Americans support universal background checks, and yet the Senate can't pass it. All right. A few things on that one. One, you don't have a majority in Congress. You have 50-50 split in the Senate, and you have a barely, barely a majority in the House. By the way, we'll soon rectify that. Second thing here, 90% of people in the United States want the existing system background checks. That's what he's referring to. That's a little bit of a manipulation. And the other thing here is that, that pesky little filibuster that he's talking about, you don't have the majority, like I said, but also the filibuster was utilized by Democrats much more than Republicans. This is something that each side uses. And to say that it's a mundane rule that no one ever uses and it's getting in the way of progress is a little stupid. But let's go to the next one because now Davey, I'm just going to call him Davey. Davey himself is coming out and saying, well, we're defeating the NRA, just Congress won't get on the bo on board. Really? Check this out. We've also gotten the NRA to the weakest point they've ever been in in American history because of the work of, a, frankly, some lawyers and a bunch of kids that came together after Parkland and said, hey, we need to do something about this because it's not Democrats or Republicans that are going to solve this. It's going to have to be Americans that come together and address the fact that no child should live in tier in their communities or in their classrooms. David, Q Ooh, I bet that was a well-focused point. Anyway. So here's my thing. The NRA is in the trouble that the NRA is in because the extreme leadership took advantage of the partnership and the utilization of those funds from everyday Americans who support the Second Amendment. You've got leadership at the NRA sticking their heads so far up the, in the, you know, the situation that the sun don't shine. That is not a reflection of people abandoning the NRA's principles because our Second Amendment is strong. That's a really big point there. The second thing here that Davey goes into, he didn't do crap on that. No one did crap on that. The people that are putting NRA in trouble, air quotes, are NRA themselves and Letitia James, the Attorney General of New York, who is attempting to assassinate that entire organization through legal means. That's the whole point. By the way, it's still going to survive. So that little talking point's a little, a little, know. oops, a little stupid. All right. And now this last one, which can only come from ABC and a far left hacktivist. Check this out. Here is any part of you considered running for office? 
Um, parts of me have, but I think ultimately it's more about getting the movement elected. You know, I think a lot of the time about the... All right. Any part of you thought about running for office? Oh, sweet goodness. This kid is a mouthpiece. He is a... All he gets to do is give used by talking points. He's clearly reading all of these talking points on the other side of the camera in the ABC newsroom. And in this entire interview, they've got pre-done slides with all of his talking points already on the screen ready for him. This is a puff piece from start to beginning. But the fact that they would even say, hey, have you thought about running for office? Oh my goodness. That's what I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think from this episode of Bullet Points, and I'll see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment where we hit the actual details of this article. I just wanted to show you what they actually aired. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later.